is enormously influenced in the music he writes by being somebody who's grown up within the cinema age. Mm -hmm. I think he writes like a... Uh, the moment you say some uh, classical composer writes a film score, everyone thinks that's disparaging and, you know, that's... Uh, but actually, what I mean is that, the, like Wagner, <laughs> the very editing of how the music is, the nuclei of music, that then feed through the piece and go into different areas of it are very much like the cuts and edits in a film. So it's not the quality of the music I'm talking about, it's about the way the thinking happens in the music. And the thing about Phaedra is Posto in Wingrave, which was the opera he made really fashion for television, which was an enormous lost opportunity, I think, at, at, at the time, and I could say why. But, but he learned, I think, from that how to use this thing that came naturally to him, this, this way of writing, but to great sort of cinematic effect. Mm -hmm. And so when you come to Phaedra, which wasn't written to be filmed or even staged at all, probably it was sort of more like a, a solo cantata from the 18th century, um, he actually uses a technique which means that when you come to film it, it's sort of the cuts, the ideas are already done for you. It's actually to do with the nature of the way the music is put together. And if you feel into that and read into that, it becomes phenomenally interesting. And then once you've done it, because that's sort of something to do with his thinking, it becomes very strong, I think, because of it. And it just felt like such a relevant piece for us to be doing in lockdown at the moment, because she's, 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 completely locked down she's completely um trapped in her own psyche she's completely claustrophobic in the world around her and in her own sort of mental instability and it just felt like the most relevant right thing to be doing right now um that we kind of had to do it didn't we and we had to do it as a film because that was the only way that we could that we could do it and the two the two things of it of it being a, a film and this sort of lockdown scenario coming together was just felt like it had to happen. It was completely right for now. It was natural and and enforced in a way. I mean, the enforcement by you know the lockdown situation. So one started doing a lot of work on Zoom, but one also became aware in doing that that the the the, the what you were watching on the screen was also very interesting live. You know, as it was sort of happening live, it wasn't prepared. And you, so it seemed to me that once you adopt the idea that this is all you had, it was the most natural thing mm. to develop it more and more and more. But I did want to make, with Alistair, a film that was a film, not an opera being filmed. Yeah. And so the way we went about it, thinking about the cuts and edits of the music, nonetheless feeding that back into a way in which it would take on its own cinematic life or visual life anyway that was for a cinema so from watching people over this year in zoom i think one got braver about the possibilities of that at the same time. i think there's a great uh, a great thing of how you act for camera yeah. in contrast to how you act for the theater you know it's got to be so much more internalized mm -hmm. and through the eye and that and and yet I think we both agree that we didn't want to do it as some sort of mind show you know we wanted to do it with a with an orchestra sung out in all the in all the filming instances against the orchestra that then been recorded having thought about all the colors and that needed line by line we worked on that a lot then recorded it then used that but but everything that we've taken everything that you see Beth actually sang it as though she was doing it in the theatre, mm -hmm. so that it had that kind of energy of breath and energy of, of, uh, of projection that you need to get a story across. So, I mean, it, it's, it was a strange amalgam of the moment and the necessity, mm -hmm. and then discovering this incredibly rich source in this piece. Yeah, and actually it's been an amazing opportunity to sort of learn the, the skill of, of acting for, for camera and and 
and film rather than theatre and the scrutiny of the camera you know it's there and it's in your face and it, it picks up every tiny little movement um, you, you can't get away with anything um, so sort of take all the skills that we that we've honed and we've learned for a big stage and sort of put them into this medium that is much more um, immediate and intimate and claustrophobic um. So you are Phaedra. Um, Tell us your journey. Tower of Phaedra. So she's. Um, oh, we haven't we haven't set this in a as a as a Greek tragedy. Um, it's very much she is now here as as a woman in in lockdown, I suppose. Or, or well, she's not in lockdown, but she could potentially be here and now. Um, and it is it's it, her 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 very human experience from the Greek tragedy could be her very human experience of 2021 and having it now. Um, this situation that she's in, that every fibre of her being is, is pushing against and fighting against, and, and, and she can't come to terms with it. She can't, um, she can't break free, and eventually she does break free um, in our version. What drama does, and opera particularly with the emotional impact of music is it can always take you into almost transgressive situations and make you sympathize and empathize with the people that are in that i mean this doesn't particularly make you empathize with her husband or with whatever's gone on before but with her the fact is she's been brought to this place she's married an older man forced into that and then look sort of around the wedding day as presented in, in, in the Racine, which is sort of the basis of the, the English version by Robert Lowell, the poet who did the, the English text for this. On the very sort of time of her marriage, she falls in love with her husband's son. And whether he becomes real or she fantasizes about it to the extent that, that the fantasy is a necessary escape from the bonds of this marriage or that she really does something or that the son has provoked the relationship in her um, you know young handsome guy and you, you you feel though that you're completely on her side no matter actually what she does however extreme the situation you don't think oh this is terrible disgusting you absolutely go for the transgression and uh, when I think about it, it seems to me art has always done that, and the theatre uh, in particular, that we are taken into areas that society sort of wags a finger at, and we are made to feel into them in such a way that we go back out into the world and we cannot be as critical of people in other situations ever again. Art can actually broaden the world directly. I mean, I, I really believe that. It can't necessarily change the whole world, but it can make an impact that leads ricochets into other things. And I think the thing about Phaedra that's so amazing is that it is a very strange, terrible situation for her, but somehow you sympathise with her. And when she takes the only way out she can see, um, you feel devastated. And I, I think one of the incredible things of Benjamin Britten, particularly bringing back to the opera, is that he knows, like perhaps few other English writers of any genre, how to take you into those prisons of the self that are created by social uh, prejudices, social um, mores, which are useless to live by. Um, because that was his life in, in many ways. Um, and I think I feel that in every bar of this, that there is, that there is a, it, there's a coup de coeur saying, look, let people live, let people live freely. Don't judge, don't restrict, create greater freedom. And he paints her with such sort of dignity and respect and strength, doesn't he? And throughout all of this, it's, um, she's not a, she's not a, hysterical woman or a crazed woman or a 
you know, all of her sort of psychological breakdown is not, it, it's, it's sympathetic and, um, and there is such a strength in her that he, that he gives her. Um, and, you know, even, even the strength in her taking, you know, finding freedom the only way that she can at the end is such a, no he writes it with such nobility and such, um, such dignity that it's, it's a celebration of this strong, brilliant woman She's so real and she's so um, human that every little bit of her has just felt really natural and really normal, which, which I know might sound really strange because she's obviously, an, an, the extremities of her are huge in this. Um, but I ha she's just, she, 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 she's just taken over my whole body, every part of this. Um, and I don't know what it's like to play her really I just have because, because the way we've been filming it's been so relaxed and we've been chatting and joking around and then we snap back in and we do that scene and then we go and you know reset something else and we snap back in but actually it's never felt it's never felt disjointed it's never felt tricky to sort of drop into those moments um, because she just feels so real to me um, yeah. Well, I'm very glad. That's that's a that's a wonderful thing if you can if you can enter a role so completely that it's sort of available to you. Yeah. Um, that that she's just a human being. That she's just a person. Um, I think that's very clear for me in the way you play it. I mean that I I constantly from the first thing we were shooting, even when we were in a rehearsal room months ago, trying things out, that it wasn't. It was very human. It was very real, uh, what you were doing. It didn't seem um, histrionic in any way. You know, it, was, it, was, it, it seemed completely natural. Um, I think that's helped by Britain. Also, he creates an atmosphere, the music that does that. But, and I think it's obviously helped by Racine and Robert Lowell writing incredible words. Um, but, but I think, like with all mythological sort of mythological, semi-mythological creatures like Phaedra, Medea, whoever, um, there is also something immediately universal about mm -hmm. it. So, yeah, so you, want, you want it to be completely normal and at the same time see that it, it sort of affects the world. Yeah.